The Run series is arguably the most popular trilogy of Flash games ever created. Released in August of 2008, the first game in the series, simply titled Run, was an instant success, spreading from albinoblacksheep.com to other Flash game websites such as Cool Math Games and Congregate. People loved the game for its simplistic yet fluid gameplay and its easy to pick up and start nature. You selected a speed, clicked on adventure mode, and you were off to the races, seamlessly moving through the game's 50 levels. The game also featured an infinite mode and an unlockable intense speed to give the game more replay value. The second game, Run 2, took the series in a bit of a different direction, or rather, a different dimension. The two-dimensional surfaces that the player used to rotate on were replaced with three-dimensional objects. The levels were split into a runner level set and a skater level set, with 25 normal levels and 6 unlockable bonus levels in each category. For Run 3, the series went back to its roots, having two-dimensional object tunnels, but the game was an improvement over the first installment in almost every way. There were many characters to select from, there was a much better infinite mode, the controls were more fluid, rotating no longer caused the gameplay to temporarily halt, there were more levels and many branching paths containing extra content, and there was a storyline that 95% of people just skipped through. These games were both fun and super popular, with Run 2 specifically being the most popular game on Cool Math Games for quite a while. With all of this popularity, it comes as no surprise that speedrunners would want to take a hand at trying to beat the games in the series as fast as possible. With so many different speeds, characters, and ways of playing, it feels as though it would have been an instant success as a speed game. But hold on a minute, the games in the Run series all share one attribute in common. The character is constantly pulled forward at a seemingly fixed speed. There is no way to maneuver the character forwards or backwards with the use of keyboard input. It appears as though you can't go any faster than the game allows. So, wouldn't this make the games in the Run series auto-scrollers? And how are you supposed to speedrun games like this? These are the questions that this video will aim to answer. By the way, because I get a million comments about it on each of my videos, if you are wondering how to still play Flash games after 2020, please check out Blue Maxima's Flashpoint. It is a collection of tens of thousands of Flash games that you can play offline once they are downloaded in the official standalone Adobe Flash player, which us speedrunners have been using for many years now for convenience and for less lag. Now that I have let you know about this, uh, top secret information, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe and leave a rating in return. Now, on with the video. Auto Scrollers. You've probably seen them before. In almost every 2D Mario game, you will approach a level at some point that forces you to wait. A lot. The bounds of the screen move extremely slowly, with a speedy completion of the level being impossible. For speedrunners, these levels are horrible because they represent the antithesis of the idea of speedrunning as a whole, beating a game as quickly as possible through skill and determination. While the games in the Run series don't really fit the definition of an auto-scroller in the traditional sense, and it is a bit misleading to refer to them as such. Okay, okay, look, I needed people to click on the video. However, the game's complete control over the player's z-velocity does produce a very similar outcome. Like auto-scrollers, if the player doesn't die along the way, all speedruns of games in the run series should end with the exact same time, right? Well, not exactly. Speedruns of Run 1, or more accurately, just Run, are split between two main categories, Adventure Mode and Infinite Mode. There are subcategories for the three different speeds, for whether the player is using the runner or the skater, and for the two different versions of the game, Flash and HTML5. For simplicity's sake, we will only be talking about runs with the runner character on the Flash version of the game, as that is what people are most familiar with. 
In adventure mode, there are a couple of tenets to follow in order to score the best possible time. Don't die, rotate as little as possible, avoid obstacles, and go through the menus as fast as possible. The not dying part is pretty self-explanatory, but it is actually extremely difficult to accomplish, especially on intense speed. At high speeds on the later levels, the gameplay precision needed to not fall into the void is monumental. To date, only one deathless speedrun has been performed on intense speed by a runner named Rubik's Math, which is a name you are going to be seeing a lot throughout this video. Because of this, he is likely the only person to have ever completed all 50 levels on adventure mode on intense speed without dying, even not in a speedrunning context. You would expect Fast Speed to have a lot more runners with deathless runs, but in fact, Rubik's Math, Epicaz, and B-Man1234 are the only people to have ever done so. Normal Speed, despite being much slower, still only has a handful of players who have completed all of the levels without dying. However, what accounts for these small, but notable time fluctuations amongst these deathless runs? Well, let's move over to the second tenet of run speedrunning, rotating as little as possible. Whenever the runner touches one of the two adjacent sides in the tunnel, the gameplay will completely freeze, as the camera takes a fixed amount of time in order to adjust to the new perspective. At 60 frames per second on normal speed, it takes 20 frames for a rotation, or a third of a second. On fast speed, it takes 14 frames, or 0.233 seconds. And on intense speed, it takes 10 frames, or a sixth of a second. However, the time loss is even more significant than this, as the runner needs to take a few frames in order to accelerate to top speed again. Thus, speedrunners have come up with routes in each level in order to achieve the lowest amount of rotations possible, with some of these paths certainly being more difficult than a normal completion of the level. Some prominent examples are the zero rotation routes in levels 34 and 37, where the player must constantly perform tight jumps on very thin platforms. There is also a very difficult strategy called the wall jump, where the player is able to execute a jump input on the top edge of a vertical wall to avoid rotating. The window for executing this jump is extremely small, but thankfully the game allows for jump inputs to be buffered, so the main challenge comes with positioning the character correctly on the wall. Too far left and the wall will be missed, or the jump just won't happen. Too far right and the game will perform a rotation, killing the player. This exploit has the potential to save rotations in levels like 17, 25, 30, and 39, but it has only been performed in the top two normal speed runs, as the trick becomes even harder at faster speeds. Thus, we move on to the third tenet of run speedrunning, avoiding obstacles, which doesn't have that big of an application in run 1 since, well, there really aren't any obstacles. But what can actually serve as an obstacle is the edges of all of the square tiles. While moving around or rotating, if the player bumps into these edges or gets caught on them, it will cause some time loss as the player spends a few frames not at top speed. This is especially important in the later levels, where the jumps and rotations are much more difficult. A rotation that barely clips the edge and causes the player to lose more speed, versus a rotation that lands cleanly on the platform, can make all of the difference in a game where the top times may just be a few frames apart. However, the most silent yet crucial tenet of run speedrunning is menuing speed. After every single level, the player is prompted with a level complete menu that prompts them to hit the spacebar to move on to the next level. Because this menu appears 49 times throughout an adventure mode run, how fast this spacebar input comes is vital. At 60 frames per second, let's say a runner takes 2 extra frames to menu after each level on average compared to the first place time. This is only 1 30th of a second slower, pretty much imperceptible to anyone playing or viewing. However, throughout the run, this would add up to over a second and a half of time loss, which is anything but insignificant. Most runners will begin mashing the spacebar before the prompt comes up so there is no need to react to it. 
Using a three finger mashing technique, I can average around 13 presses per second. So disregarding possible loading times, I can expect my menus to be between one and five frames. However, during hours of attempts, having to perform hundreds of these mashes, it is extremely difficult to menu consistently, especially while having to juggle everything else like actually playing the game well. This tenet, unfortunately, is the most annoying out of the four, and can certainly put people off from playing the game at a high level. Thankfully, for most people who aren't trying to become the very best of the best, menuing is not nearly as vital, with the possible time save from fast menus just being an added bonus. But wait a minute. Adventure mode is only one of the game modes present in Run 1. How does all of this stuff apply to infinite mode, and how does it even work? Infinite mode operates on a difficulty percentage, which correlates to how many tiles are placed in the level. 5% barely has anything missing, while 99% can sometimes feel impossible to complete due to how many gaps there are. The game generates a tunnel of fixed length at 5% difficulty, and if the player manages to complete it without dying, the difficulty will increase by 10%, maxing out at 99%. However, speedrunners purposefully take a death in the first level so the difficulty will only increase by 5% upon completing the tunnel. While this will initially lose some time, because higher difficulty tunnels are slightly longer, this will end up saving time in the long run, as the difficulty of every subsequent tunnel will be 5% lower than the normal amount. Because 90% difficulty will still jump to 99% upon completion, the runner still plays the exact same amount of tunnels using this method. Once the player completes a tunnel at 99% difficulty, infinite mode is counted as being completed. As you may have guessed, all of the tunnels that are generated in this game mode are completely random, and there is no way to be prepared for what is to come. The player must constantly think on their toes, mapping out a route to prevent dying, while also minimizing rotations as much as possible. However, both the normal and fast speed records are so optimized that they don't feature a single rotation. The player is completely at the game's mercy to get a pattern on each level that is even possible to complete without rotating. On intense speed, things are a bit different, with most runners opting to actually reduce their speed to fast at around 50% difficulty to avoid dying in the later levels, where the difficulty of playing the game at intense speed just becomes unreasonable. Well, except for this badass, who managed to complete every single level at top speed thanks in no small part to the amazing RNG they got, allowing their run to be 14 seconds faster than second place. Now that we've given a pretty extensive overview of speedrunning the first run game, let's now take a look at its very different successor, Run 2. As mentioned earlier, Run 2 is made up of 62 total levels, with there being 31 levels for the runner and 31 levels for the skater. These 31 levels are further divided into 25 normal levels and 6 unlockable bonus levels. Each level in the game has a yellow bonus in it that can be collected, and for every 5 bonuses that are collected on a character, one bonus level unlocks. The bonuses in the 25 main levels allow for the first 5 bonus levels to be unlocked, while the bonuses present in those 5 bonus levels allow for the 6th bonus level to be unlocked. This level also has a bonus in it, which doesn't help unlock anything, but it is still required for 100% completion. The three main categories in the game, Runner Level Set, Skater Level Set, and Both Level Sets are therefore split into any percent and 100% subcategories, where the player either completes only normal levels while not having to collect any bonuses, or all levels while having to collect every bonus. Like Run 1, Run 2 has Normal, Fast, and Intense Speed subcategories for Runner Level Set and Skater Level Set. However, for the Both Level Sets category, the game has to be treated like it is on a new save file, where only the Normal and Fast Speeds are unlocked. Thus, the Any% percent category, where the player must complete the 50 Normal Levels in the game, is locked on Fast Speed the entire time. The 100% category is initially locked on fast speed for the first character, but the second character can actually be played on intense speed. This is because, to unlock intense speed, you have to complete 100% of the levels and collect all of the bonuses on one of the characters. Skater is therefore the most optimal choice to start with since intense speed saves much more time on runner due to it being the longer level set of the two in terms of completion time. 
The main tenets of Run 1 speedrunning apply to Run 2 as well, with avoiding deaths, staying crucial, difficult and or inventive strategies to save rotations becoming vital, menuing staying important, and avoiding obstacles becoming much more pertinent. To save rotations, speedrunners will rotate on the back of platforms when not intended, perform large jumps that are barely possible, and execute movement that becomes near impossible at high speeds. However, the most interesting rotation save of all is this corner launch in level 23 of Skater, found by yours truly, that can save two rotations. Unfortunately, this save is also one of the hardest in the entire game, as it comes at the very tail end of the level set. There are only three runners that have ever pulled off this strategy first try in a personal best run, speaking volumes to its sheer difficulty. Staying deathless is extremely challenging in some categories, with Skater on intense speed only having two players that have ever submitted a deathless run. However, it gets far worse than that. The current 100% Skater intense world record by Rubik's Math has 18 deaths. I counted, with Rubik switching from intense to fast speed after completing level 20. This is allowed since, like run 1, the speed subcategory just marks the highest speed that you played on in the run. The current full game any percent record, also by Rubix, is deathless since every level has to be played on fast speed and no bonuses are required. With Rubix actually pulling off a lot of difficult rotation saves like the back rotation in level 18 of Runner. Full game 100%, however, is a different story, with Rubik's taking 12 deaths throughout the course of the run, mainly due to playing the runner on intense speed. However, Rubik's has to take a time hit when changing speed in some levels. After obviously having to change the speed to intense when first playing the runner, he actually changes his speed down to fast in level 25 since the bonus route is almost impossible to nail first try on intense speed. Rubik's then changes the speed back up to intense for bonuses 1, 2, and 3, where he then goes all the way down to normal speed for bonus 4. In this level, the player can't jump at all, and the platforming is insanely difficult, even at slower speeds. Only a handful of people are known to have ever completed this level with the bonus a single time on intense speed, so it is extremely unlikely that a future 100% world record will omit this speed drop. Rubix then finishes out bonuses 5 and 6 on intense speed to complete the run in 6 minutes and 19 seconds. By dying significantly less, using some currently unimplemented 100% rotation saves, and executing the necessary speed changes much quicker, a time under 6 minutes is thought to barely be attainable. However, time will tell if we ever manage to get there. By 100%ing the game, the player is rewarded with a cheat code that allows each of the level sets to be played with double jumps, with either the normal character or the character from the other level set. So, there are subcategories on each level set for these three combinations. Most of these categories do not have many runs in them, but skater level set with double jumps at intense speed is actually more popular than it is without double jumps. The full game categories do not have these divisions since the file is treated as fresh, so the cheat isn't unlocked. Altogether, this means that Run 2 has 38 different categories to speedrun in a game that can be 100%ed in less than 7 minutes, which I think is pretty awesome. However, what isn't awesome is that Run 1's menuing problem is even worse in Run 2, since the levels in Run 2 happen to be much shorter, greatly increasing the average amount of level transitions per minute of gameplay. To emphasize how important this is, speedrunner Gradient41 managed to beat my skater fast PB by 0.267 seconds without using the rotationless 23 strategy, which can save up to 0.7 seconds. Adding these together, this means that Gradient saved an entire second compared to me just off of menuing. When the top 5 in the category are just around 1 second apart, this is an enormous deal. Thankfully, like Run 1, this only becomes a large problem at high level, and there are plenty of categories that players can choose to optimize instead that are not so heavily reliant on menuing, such as that Skater Intense 100% record that has 18 deaths and only actually plays on intense speed for 20 out of the 31 levels. Now, to wrap up this video, let's take a look at the most recent installment in the Run series, Run 3. Contrary to Run 2's massive amount of categories, Run 3 has just 4, any percent. 
New Game Plus, all levels in the original release, and Reverse. The main tunnel is made up of 65 different levels that the player must complete on a fresh save file. However, the first three levels can be skipped by clicking on the credits button, so that is actually when timing starts. Levels 4 through 10 must be played on Runner, where after the skater can be switched to, which, like in the other games in the series, is much faster than the Runner. This comes with the trade-off that the later levels of the game are extremely difficult to complete first try on Skater. Thus, some runners switch back to the runner once the levels become too difficult. However, to compete at the very top of the leaderboard, the game must be completed deathless while on Skater from level 11 onward, like DHA does in his current world record of 1046. In New Game Plus, the objective is still to complete the main tunnel, but any unlockable character may be used from the start. However, skipping levels 1 through 3 using the credits button is not allowed. New Game Plus does not require a fresh save file, so there are no cutscenes that need to be mashed through or skipped. The fastest character in the game to play with is actually the Bunny since it has a higher top speed than the Skater, which is what Random Kid 999 uses in his current world record of 948, which has zero deaths. The All Levels category in the original release requires the main tunnel and all of the side tunnels to be completed. The reason that there isn't a 100% category for any subsequent releases is because the game has been updated a multitude of times since 2014, and many different levels have been added along the way. Since it is pretty much impossible to keep track of this, it has been decided that a true 100% will not exist until the game receives its final update. Finally, the miscellaneous reverse category is like the New Game Plus mode, but you start at the very end of level 65 and try to reach the beginning of level 1. So, not only are the levels in reverse order, but you are also playing them backwards as well, which changes all of the memorized platforming in the game. This mode is activated by holding down the previous button in the pause menu. The current world record of 955 by Random Kid unsurprisingly uses the bunny, with the run only being 7 seconds slower than the New Game Plus world record. In run 3, the rotations were altered to no longer pause the game, removing that avenue of potential time save and time loss. Additionally, the levels are all continuous, meaning that menuing is no longer a factor either, right? Well, not exactly. You see, you can actually save some time on every single level transition by exiting to the main menu right when the level completes and reselecting Explore Mode. This causes the player to skip the small buffer region present between every single level in the game, which adds up to a decent time save throughout the run. However, it is not quite as big as one would expect, since the player has to regain acceleration upon being placed at the start of each level, causing each menu to save just a handful of frames, with slow menus actually losing time. This exploit also allows for the mashable cutscenes at the end of levels 10 and 40 to be skipped, allowing for some additional time save in any percent. The faster that a menu is performed, the more time that it saves, and it is the reason why DHA's any percent world record of 1046 is 7 seconds faster than the second place time of 1053 by Mark2427, despite both runs being deathless and using the skater the entire time after level 10. However, this technique actually doesn't save time in the New Game Plus category since the bunny has such a high top speed that the loss of acceleration would make it slower. Finally, Run 3 also has a level leaderboard for speedruns of the 22 side tunnels present in the game. These categories are not nearly as competitive as the main ones, but they still provide a unique experience due to the wide array of possible character sections and the special tiles and blocks that are present, such as the ice blocks which give the player additional speed. Run 3 is quite a complex, diverse speed game, and its apparent disconnect from the normal speedrunning tenants present in Run 1 and 2 gives it a much different feel and experience. So, there you have it, a comprehensive overview of the speedrunning landscape present across the run series, games that most people would not expect to be so thought out and competitive. All of these games could be perceived as an auto-scroller in some capacity, but due to a variety of factors such as rotations, obstacles, menuing, character selection, routing, avoiding deaths, and much much more, the speedrunning landscape of the series is anything but simplistic. Games as short as Run 1 and 2 are able to have so many speedrun categories due to the large amount of options that the game provides, ensuring that there really is something there for everyone. 
Run 3, while having less main categories, does have a bunch of unique, individual level categories that players can compete in due to it being a larger, more fleshed out game. The series having the name Run shows that going fast is something that is baked into the identity of these games at their very core. And for speedrunners, we appreciate being able to push these games to their absolute limits to see how fast they can really go. Thank you all so much for watching to the end of the video, though I urge you to continue watching through these ending remarks as there are some extremely important things that I still need to mention. While I was wrapping this project up, Rubik's Math sent me this really interesting stream of DMs along with this accompanying video of him launching the runner into the stratosphere for around 6 seconds by getting a really janky corner boost off the side of this platform. After around 8 more hours of corner boost attempts, he became the first person ever to complete level 16 of runner rotationless, which saves around 0.37 seconds on fast speed. This discovery shows us that Run 2 may not be as solved as we think from a rotation standpoint, however, only time will tell if a player ever actually manages to pull this off in a full run. And speaking of runner fast, speedrunner Rubik's Meth recently got a new world record in the category with a 231.7, using the run legal Among Us character hack of the game. Rubik's Meth didn't stop there, also getting the records in the runner double jump and skater double jump categories one day later and two days later respectively. When I finished writing the script, Rubik's Math had an astonishing 37 out of 38 of the records in Run 2, dangerously close to sweeping every single world record. But thanks to Rubik's Math, he currently sits at just 34 out of 38. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see a video covering more of the history side of Run 2 and Rubik's Math's quest for the full world record sweep. And if you are interested in learning how to speedrun games in the Run series or any other Flash games that I've covered on my channel, make sure to join my Discord server linked in the description, as I have created a resources channel that contains links to various other speedrunning discords and tutorials. Thank you all once again, and I hope that you all have a great rest of your day.